biblical gifts. And to show you where we're heading with this, tonight we're going to look at worship. And worship shows up 108 times in 106 verses, under two verses, excuse me. Now, we're not going to look at them all, but we're going to look at worship to what the Bible will give us its definition through the Holy Spirit. And the first place it shows up is Genesis 22. This is Calvary, Genesis 22, in the Old Testament. Verse number 5. And Abraham said to the young man, Abide here with the ass, and I with the I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. There's worship. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham's father, he said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself, Jesus, himself, Jesus and God, a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both of them went together. So the very first aspect of the Bible that you get worship. Abraham, the father of the nation of Israel, Abraham, upon the same mountain that Jesus will be crucified many years later, is talking about coming to Jehovah, God, and reverencing him, who is the Lamb, Jesus Christ. John 10, 30 says, I and the Father are one. And in the end of the Gospel of John, it says, my Philip, my God, my Lord, my God. So, Exodus 34 14. Again, I'm sorry I'm so off on these. My health has been terrible. And I want to get more and more done so if you would pray for me. So verse 14 of Exodus 34, thou shalt not, thou shalt worship. Not thou shalt not, thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord, that's Jehovah, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. At least I'll make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and go a whoring after their gods, worship, and do sacrifice unto their gods, worship, and one call thee and eat of his sacrifice, worship. And then a marriage between the unsaved. Verse 17, thou shalt make no molten God. So you can worship other gods, which our God is jealous, can't stand. And in the Baptist church today in Laodicea, we worship the church building. We worship the pastor. We worship ball games. Stars and actors and actresses. We bring in other gods of Esther of Easter. And Tammuz of Christmas. And God says, that makes me sick. Revelation chapter 3. All right, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. 
At least thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, we find sunrise service in Jeremiah. It's an abomination to God. And the moon. That's most of your religions today. The moon god. That's found in Islam. I forget whether North or South Carolina has a crescent moon on their license plate. The stars. Yeah, you can go to Hollywood and see the, the stars and put your feet in their feet on the sidewalk. Even all the hosts of heaven, Apollo, the, the Cancer, Gemini, the Virgo, and serve them which the Lord thy God has divided Unto all nations under the whole earth. There are people out there who worship. Worship. You see the word worship. The sun, the moon, and the stars. The zodiac. It has been recalled, it has been said that Ronald Reagan, the President of the United States, his wife, would seek her spiritual guru, what have you, before the president would do anything. Now, the fact is, at least one time in the presidency of the United States of America, the president's moves have been minded by the sun, the moon, the stars, the zodiac, called the horoscope. How many Christians look at their horoscope? It's been many, 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 many years since I looked at the horoscope, and I don't care. Well, there it is. There are people who will not do anything until they read their horoscope. There are people that worship the sun rising. There are people who worship the moon, the stars, stargazing, NASA, space exploration. They'll come down here in Florida and watch a, 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 a spacecraft get launched, but they won't sit in a church service to hear Jesus being preached. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 19. Notice the word worship. It shall be that thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that ye shall utterly perish. So there's a serving and there's a worshiping. Serving is when you clean Mary's statue in the front yard of your house. You make sure she's clean. You wipe her down. Serving is when you have an office in the church. And, you know, you clean the windows, you, you sweep the floor, you, you mow the grass, whatever it is. It's not always done for God. Worship is when you give your dedicate and you give your honor and you give to God or gods the, 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 the superiority rule overall and all. Evolution holds to the Big Bang and the monkey. Christianity is supposed to the Lord Jesus Christ and God, and yet sometimes that pastor, sometimes that church builder becomes worshipped. You know, we're told to preach the gospel, and, and the pastor or the Sunday school teacher will get up there and say, well, bring him to church, bring him to church. No, that's not what you're told. Nowhere can you find them the invitation to church. 
You are found to preach the gospel. Plain and simple. Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 5, verse 14. He said, Nay, but as a captain of the host of the Lord am I come. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? So here's the Lord Jesus Christ, the captain of the Lord's host. And he falls on his face. He bows down. You know, there are more people in Islam, there are more people in India, there are more people in Japan, there are more people in China that will bow down to their gods than a Christian that will bow down before Jesus Christ. Now, listen, if, if you've got physical limitations like me, you can bow down here, won't be able to get back up. But you can bow your heart down not necessary your knee. And then he says, What saith my Lord to servant? So the next thing is, as far as honoring and worshiping God is asking direction from God what to do. Not asking your horoscope, not asking your tea leaves, not asking your fortune teller, asking God what do you want me to do? First Chronicles 16, 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of, of holiness. So here's a giving. That's not money. This is a giving of our great and glorious God. Honor and praise and thankfulness. An offering? Well, there, there's your money. There's your time. There's your effort. There's your family. Then worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. There ought to be no other beauty than God, who is holy. I mean, too many people in the world, they worship the, the beauty of a woman, the beauty of nakedness, the beauty of pornography. That's not God. The beauty of advertising. How come... A lot of these things, you've got to have a half-naked woman. Because they're taking your eyes off the beauty of the Lord. They don't want you to see the beautiful Jesus Christ. Because the world sees them as sick and defiled, ripped to pieces, nailed, pierced, the thorns, the whips. That he still holds in his body the marks. To the world, that's not beautiful. To the Christian, that should be beauty. Because that's what saved your soul. Psalms 22. Psalms 22. 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. All kindreds of nations shall worship before thee. That's a millennium passage. That's not going to happen today. That's not going to happen in America. That's future. The future, not only... Will the nation of Israel 
Not only will the Christian, the church, the nation, will stand before the actual Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. They will give Jesus Christ the praise, the honor, and the worship that he is worthy and no one else. Psalms 29. Psalms 29, verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. You read that somewhere. Worship the Lord in beauty and holiness. We read that. It's repeated. You ought not to be looking at cheerleaders. You ought not to be looking at models. You are to set your eyes, your heart, and your worship on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anything else is a God. A small God. Psalm 66. Psalm 66, 4. All the earth, future reference, millennium, all the earth shall worship thee, God, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name, Selah. This is not a cola commercial. I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. No, that ain't it. I guarantee it will be some old-fashioned hymns. Maybe some of the proper songs. We're going to sing. We're going to praise the church, the Jews, and the nations, the Gentiles. In the millennium. And in heaven. Because in heaven we worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In heaven we give them the praise. In heaven we will sing the church, the Jews, and the nations. Glory to God. Psalms 95. Psalms 95, 95, 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. There, there's a bow on the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our, our maker. So, you get a preacher, he gets up and he preaches a message. How many people go up to that altar? You know, the old time preaching, man, the altars would be quite full. The old time churches there would people be in the basement of that building praying during the service for people to be saved. There would be preachers praying for hours before they started their day on their knees. Like I said, I mean, if you're physically incapable. But let me ask you a question. And this is the question asked, is your pastor, is your Sunday school teacher, are they fit? How often are they on their knees before God? Has your children ever walked into your room, a room, and found you on your knees praying to God? Have they even come in and found that you're reading the Bible? How's that one? Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations, millennium, 
which shall come against Jerusalem shall even go up year to year to worship the king, capital K, that's Jesus, Lord of hosts, Jesus, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. There's a worship. You're worshiping Jesus in the millennium. That Feast of Tabernacles, if you study that out, now you can't find in the Bible that that's it, but that would be the most likely celebration of the Jewish feast that Jesus was born in. God would not pick a pagan holiday. God would not pick a pagan God to celebrate the birth of Jesus. The Feast of Tabernacles is the only one that has eight days. Eight days that male child was to be circumcised like they had Jesus circumcised. But here's the millennium. Here's a specific period of time that the Gentiles, the nations, will come to Jerusalem, will stand before Jesus, and they will bow down and they will worship the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Matthew 2.2 two. Then where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. How did they worship him? They brought gold, silver, and frankincense. And when they felt when they saw them, they fell down. <clears throat> Look at verse eleven. When they were come into the house, they saw the young child, Jesus, not a baby, young child, with Mary's mother, fell down, fell down on the knees and worshipped him. When they had opened up the treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, there's a gift, frankincense, and myrrh. There it is. There's your worship, and there's your giving to Jesus. As a young child. And they were Gentiles. It's going to happen again. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. 9. He says to them all these things. Will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. That's Satan. Satan wants worship. Satan wants the honor and praise and glory due to God and Jesus. Then says Jesus unto him, Satan, get thee hence, Satan, for it's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. All right, so you got somebody else who you're worshiping? You're honoring. You know, you get down your knees to water that Christmas tree. You get down your knees to put the presents underneath that tree, to pick up the presents from that tree. You get down on your knees to put the eggs underneath the bush. You get down your knees. For what? What gets you on your knees? John 4, John 4, 23. But the hour cometh is now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father, capital L, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God's a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, that's a new birth. John 3, 3. God is not a totem pole. God is not a statue. God is not a race car. God is not 
your stuffed animal. God is not a model. God is a spirit. And you got to come to God in spirit. Acts 24. Acts 24, 14. For this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, the Jews, so worship I the God of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, believe in all things which are written in the law and the prophets. So, worshiping is believing the Old Testament. Now, there are people out there today, they reject the Old Testament. I only read what Paul wrote. I only read this. You got to have all 66 books for worship. And you got to believe it. Revelation 4. Revelation 4, 12. I can't be 12. Try 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that lived. There they are, falling on their knees. Worship him that liveth forever, God, and ever. And cast their crowns, there's giving God their crown before the throne, saying, There's a knees, there's a bowing down, there's God. Last place, Revelation 19, verse 10. I fell at his feet to worship him. He said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that had the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the Spirit of God. Don't fall down and worship man. Don't fall down and worship an angel. Don't fall down and worship a pope. Don't fall down and worship your pastor. Don't fall down and worship your church building. Fall down and worship with all your might and all your praise and all your thankfulness, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you.